So in this episode, there's quite a few upgrades I want to get onto the account. I want to start doing some God Wars Dungeon 2, probably some Vindicta or Hellweir, which I'm sure we'll be able to do at the current stage of our account. But I also want to start chipping off at the harmonic dust that we need to make the attuned crystal teleport seed. It's the same as a crystal teleport seed, but it has an infinite number of charges. Just as a word of advice, I lost my previous one in the wilderness doing my herb run. So do not take this to the wilderness because you will lose it when you die. You can't protect it. So we need 4,000 in total, which means we need another 1,500. I'm pretty sure it's 600 to 800 of these an hour. On top of that, because I've been doing a load of the criminal bolt runs, I've actually unlocked the legendary lumberjack aura so that I can do the criminal bolt runs and get even more. The other upgrade that I really need to get on my account to make that even more efficient is the nature sentinel outfit, which for those of you unaware, it's the elite woodcutting outfit and it gives you a ton of buffs across the game in woodcutting. I was realizing the other day that I'm actually close to comp like in terms of stats. But I need 120 farming and 120 archaeology. And with the double XP coming up, I think that's what I want to tackle on this account. There we go. So that didn't take very long at all. So I've got the attuned crystal teleport seed now. And this is going to be really useful for all of the farm runs, the criminal bolt runs and that that I do on the account. And it's just a nice item to have. So if you haven't got this, I'd recommend just getting the grind out of the way and grabbing one. So double XP is just around the corner. And what I want to be doing this double XP weekend is actually progressing my prayer. I'm going to camp a load of eye watches to make a lot of GP on the account and see how much XP I can get. I don't really need too much XP on the account other than farming and archaeology, so I may do a bit of that as well. I left an offer in the Grand Exchange overnight to buy all of the items that I'm going to need for Vi watches to mage them. I don't think using melee is too efficient, as with mage you can use greater chain. But yeah, all I've done, as you can see, I bought all of these 20% below mid. I literally just put an offer in to buy these. Put them below 20 and even the gloves I, when i went to buy them they instantly bought so i thought i'd sell a set for mid as well and i made a good 500k off that and then i took the audacity to put an offer in to get them for 600k so if i wanted to i could actually make 700k just off this item but obviously i just want to use these four buy watches you guys haven't missed out on too much the past few days i've just been chilling and doing dailies and like we're nearly finished getting through the 100 spirit weeds so i can show you how much we've made off them but honestly, making dailies is completely carrying us. We have 13.8 mil, but in the banking stuff that we can sell, we have a ton more. So yeah, I'm going to get set up for Vi watches, and I'll show you how much progress we can make. In this episode, I want to do a little bit of bossing as well. I think we're going to get started with God Wars Dungeon 2. And to be honest with you, I've got loads of logs left to do on the account. Like, I have all of the God Wars Dungeon 1 log. It isn't the funnest content to actually do. I wouldn't mind, in this series, going for some full logs and getting some pretty cool titles. I've got loads to go for on the account. And in terms of God Wars Dungeon 2, the only log that I've actually completed is Vindicta. But yeah, I'm going to get set up for Vyze. I am probably going to put Scavenging 4 on my Garbage Subjugation. I'm not going to bore you with showing you all of my perks. I've finished up a few of the 120s I wanted to get. I got 120 Archaeology and 120 Farming, which is pretty cool. That's my comp skills all done and out the way. We're ready to just start plowing out some of the other requirements we need. The new update for Divination's just come out. I've just made a video on it. And... There's no better time for me to go AFK it really and make some money on the account. See how much money we can make. See if it's worth doing for the series. If not, I'll go back to Vi Watches and see how that is. Obviously, we haven't unlocked the Grace of the Elves, the Brooch of the Gods, all of that stuff. So I won't be able to use that. But all the boosts that we've got from this outfit should be more than enough. I'm also going to be bringing some Super Prayer Renewal Potions. The main reason I want to bring these is so that I can maintain the Chronicle Attraction. It's just going to give me some bonus XP and it will also increase the amount of powerments that we'll have. Every little helps, right? Uh, for those of you that are unaware, you can use the Divination Outfit to teleport to any colony in the game. But when you run out of them charges, if you go into the Max Guild, you can retune this to certain Wisps. So you can actually go to Brilliant, Radiant, Luminous and Incandescent Wisp colonies using it. And you can also bind that to your Grace of the Elves if you have one of them. So I'm going to do some testing and see how much money we can make. I'll let you guys know if it's worth doing or not. Obviously the cost of energies are completely plummeted at the moment. But I'm going to do a two hour test and I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, so that's all of the divination I'm going to be doing for now. Like we were able to get 132,000 energy today just AFK and while playing other games and doing my work and whatnot. To be honest with you, that actually price checks to quite a lot of money. Obviously, they're not selling for mid at the moment, but they're probably going to stabilize at around 200, maybe 220. They're already above 200 again. So we're just shy of 30 mil there in energies. 
so I've just finished up farming the 100 spirit weed seeds that I wanted to do. And I want to show you how much money we've got from our farm runs and dailies. And then obviously the incandescent grinding that I've been doing while working. So first up from 100 spirit weeds, we got 22.8 million. Minus about 3 to 4 mil for the seeds. So we made about 18, 18, 19 mil in profit from them. The blood weeds is an extra 6 mil. The criminal bolts, this is insane. 10.1 mil, they've gone up over the past few days to over 3k each, and they probably sell above mid. And then the rest of the farming run supplies from the coconuts, morcella mushrooms, and white berries put us over 47 million. And then if I throw in everything from the dailies in this event, we've got 59.7 mil, which is crazy. And then in our second event, we've got all of the incandescent energies that we've got from just AFK and while doing work, which is just over 28 mil. These probably won't sell for mid, and if they don't, I'm going to keep them for a bit. And then we got our rune shop runs and our daily potion flasks, which add up to an extra 2.6 mil. And altogether, that's 54 mil. So we've made over 100 million in the past few days doing our daily herb and farm runs and our criminal bolt runs. So I'm going to sell all of this and show you how much we've made. A little tip. Keep your bomb vials for when it's double XP. These go through the roof because the best way on double XP aside overloads to train your herb lore is by making foam bombs. So these have sold for almost 50% above mid instantly. Just finished selling everything and we have 108 million, which is sick. Plus we have 8 million in the bank too. So in terms of upgrades, I have a base range million mage set. I'm going to get set up for some God Wars Dungeon 2 and I'm going to show you the gear setup that I'm going to go for. I think I'm going to opt to melee it. Obviously I'm not allowed to use Greater Barge, but I'm going to get a melee set up and go do some God Wars Dungeon 2. I've gone for the Twin Fury Blades as my next upgrade and I'm also going to augment all of my Bando's armor and the blades. On the weapons I'm going to be putting Precise 6 Equilibrium 4 because they're relatively inexpensive. And on the armor I'm going to roll for some standard perks. So that's everything perked out for now. I've got Precise 6 Genocidal, Equilibrium 4, and then on my armor, I have Relentless 5 Crackling, which we got relatively lucky getting, to be fair. We got Enhanced Devoted 4, took about 3 attempts, Biting 2 Venom Blood, and Impatient 4. This has set us back like 50, 60 million, but honestly, it's well worth it. You want to get your perks. The next thing that I'm going to want to get is a two-handed switch for Cleave, so I'm going to buy a Miziari from the Grand Exchange. For those of you unaware, this is a tier 85 weapon that's relatively cheap and we, we can always sell it back and i'm going to put the same perks on this i'm going to try to get precise six and equilibrium four and then we're ready to do some vindicta and i'll show you the preset that i'm going to run and there we go we got both of them on the first attempt so that did not take long at all so here's a voyage i sent out the other day for some ancient bones hopefully we can get this and get some free vampirism scrimshaws to use nice there we go that's 10 that's just enough so that we can get a vamp scrimshaw to use for the next four hours it's always better to make your own scrimshaws because they actually have a boosted effect and on top of that, they last an additional hour. Of course, if you don't need any scrimshaws, you could always make the tradable versions and sell them for a nice profit. There we go. That's the superior scrimshaw of vampirism made. So first up, I began by making some of my best adrenaline potions, which in my case is adrenaline renewals. These give you 40% adrenaline opposed to the 30 and 20 that you get from using the other adrenaline potions in the game. They have a steep requirement to make, but you can use pulse core boosts or request assistance to make these super early and they're well worth getting. So first up, let's look at our preset. The most important items to bring are your best overloads and adrenaline potions, bone bombs and your best damage in familiar, which for me is a ripper demon without the scrolls. And then of course you want to bring all of your armor and weapons. I've tested this with and without the Scrimshaw. You do not need it, but personally, I feel it is nice to have the extra heals, especially whilst berserked at the beginning, because it allows me just to focus on damaging the boss without wasting any food or time using defensive abilities in the kill whatsoever. To begin with, I'm not allowed to use Limitless, Greater Barge, Greater Flurry, or the Tier 99 Prayer. I will need to unlock these by getting a certain threshold of kills at this boss, so I can show you how to change your rotations, what else to do when you get these upgrades, and also how it affects your kills an hour and profits. And also this way I can show you guys how I kill the boss without these important upgrades. So the reason you bring a two-handed weapon and the dual wield weapon is so that you can use both Decimate and Cleave, which are two of your strongest melee basic abilities when in solo combat. And you can obtain this by swapping weapons. So also you get the choice between Hurricane and Destroy. Destroy tends to genuinely be stronger, but if you need adrenaline, you want a hurricane because in the time that you would have finished your destroy, you would have got a few basics in as well. 
For those of you guys that are thinking, why would I use Vuln Bombs? Let me put this into perspective for you. They make it so that you deal 10% more damage to your opponent over the course of a minute. Meaning every kill we get on average 20,000 extra damage in that kill. So every 10 kills we essentially are getting an extra kill for free. 10 Vuln Bombs at the moment cost 150k. And the price of a Vindicta kill factor in all of the drops is between 370 and 320,000, making them well worth using because every single time that you use 10, you're going to get a free kill, which is going to cost you 150k, but you're making over double that from the extra kill that you've gained. After two hours of getting this down, I was able to get 41 kills an hour, which on average is about 16 million GP an hour in loot. And I used just over one hour of the vamp scrim in them two hours. Meaning that with the cost of Vuln Bombs, our Scrim and Adrenrenals, we spent around 2.5 mil an hour, making a profit of roughly 13.5 mil. I'd get in the habit of using all of these upgrades as you unlock them and not cheaping out on them. They will increase your overall PVM and experience and make things a lot more fun. And alongside that, you'll gain a lot more kills an hour and hopefully more profits despite the cost. I tend not to include the cost of overloads in my price checks, purely due to the fact that whatever you do in the game, you're going to be using the overloads. In terms of tips specifically for this boss using my gear setup, I genuinely berserk straight off the start and use three strong basic abilities and drink my adrenaline potion. I then use an assault followed by a destroyer hurricane. These are your two strongest thresholds that you want to prioritize using in your berserk at this current point in the game. Destroying with dual wield is genuinely more damage output but there are some situations where hurricaning will be more beneficial due to the fact that you can use basic abilities before your destroyer would actually be done allowing you to get even more adrenaline. Then for the rest of the duration of your Berserk, you actually want to opt to use your strong basic abilities. If you do not have Elder Overload potions or a high hit chance against a boss, you can actually begin your Berserk rotation off with a Quake. Using a Quake will actually apply a debuff to the boss, making it so that your hit chance is overall a lot higher, lowering the affinity of his defense. As soon as your Berserk ends, you want to use all three of your bleeds on Vindicta. Your bleeds are extremely strong. You do not want to use them while Berserked, however, because they do not actually gain any additional damage from your Berserk. Make sure that you walk your Slaughter. This can easily be done by clicking away as soon as you press the Slaughter keybind. Do not walk away after you've used Slaughter. Because if you do this, the first hit will not be tripled. Whereas if you walk away as you're sending it out, all three of your hits will be tripled and will overall make your kill times a lot faster. Then to finish up the kill, you want to use some strong basics and use your assault and destroy once they're available and off cooldown. Vindicta in this part of the fight will do one melee attack, followed by a ranged attack and then another melee attack before flying up into the air. So as a rule of thumb, do not use your assault or destroy if he is just about to fly on that second melee attack as you will lose some damage when he goes over to the other side of the room and your ability gets cancelled. The longer this phase goes on, the more damage his attacks actually deal. So if you're struggling with HP, you can opt to use a shield and resonance to ranged attack. This can give you up to a 2 to 3k heal which is pretty nice. And then you can actually swap to protect from range to also mitigate some damage. But do not do this when using resonance. As if you're mitigating the damage while you're about to get a heal, your heal is overall going to be halved. As your resonance will not be of cooldown for the second ranged attack, you can use devotion instead. And then with protect from range, you can avoid all of the incoming damage. This will then carry over for his melee hits if you wanted to use protect from melee. Please note that this is one of them cases where offense truly is your best defense. So working on your damage output will be the most optimal way to negate taking damage in the long run. The final tip I have is once he flies away, you want to be using your abilities such as Barge, Bladed Dive and Surge to move towards Vindicta. And then as soon as you go towards him, you can spam click out of the fire to avoid taking any damage. And also because you're going to be straight back on the boss, you ain't going to be wasting any time in the fire and you can get straight back onto him. And due to the fact that I want to use Berserk and Adren Pots every single kill, I teleport back to Wars, reset my abilities at the Crystal, and then jump straight back into the next kill with 4 Adren. This isn't the most optimal method of doing this, but if you've watched Pup's Guide, at the top end of the game, it isn't too inefficient doing this, and I'm assuming it's going to be even more efficient at the low end of the game, because at the lower end of the game, without having Adrenaline Potions using Greater Barge or the Limitless Sigil, you're simply not going to be able to get a very strong rotation off in your Berserk, which is overall going to speed up your kill times greatly. So that's our one down of Indicta. We made 4.68 mil, which isn't the best, but you don't make too much loot until you get a big drop here. So that's to be expected. As soon as you get the big drop, it should average out over time. Okay, so that's all I've got for you guys this episode. We have made 8.1 mil from Vindicta and have killed about 76 of them, I want to say. 
my efficiency in terms of actually killing it has improved the more I've got used to the gear. And I'm at 41 kills an hour at the moment. I'm hoping I can boost this up even further. But it's not the end of the world if not. I'm going to say at 100 kills I may be allowed to unlock another ability to use at the boss. To show you guys any altercations in the boss fight itself. I'll either do that or perhaps have to get 50 to 100 kills of all of God Wars Dungeon 2 before I can unlock certain abilities for every one of the bosses. I'm still unaware of that. I am in the process of making a list of goals that I have on the account that I want to achieve and also a checklist of when and how I can unlock each ability. So any suggestions like that is always appreciated in the comment section below. I ain't going to make this too long and bore you guys too much. There's tons of more bosses that we can learn together. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. And if you guys haven't already joined the community discord, the link's going to be in the comment section down below. Please join along. I'd love to have you guys there. It's a great place. If you've got any questions, there'll be a ton of people there to help you. And overall, we can all grow and build this community together. Thank you guys for watching and making it to the end of the video. As always, if you're enjoying the series, let me know by dropping a like on the video. And if you don't want to miss out on any future guides, content, series, you name it, then subscribe to the channel so that you can keep up to date with all of the content that I'm going to be bringing you guys. As always, your feedback is so invaluable to the channel and improving the quality of the content that I can bring out to you guys. So if there's anything that you want to nitpick that you think can be improved, please let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you're enjoying the rest of your double XP and good luck getting all of them gains.